Hey guys, Andy Robertson here from GreenbeltAcademy.com and I am super excited for today's video. If you are preparing for the ASQ Six Sigma Green Belt Certification, this is a really important video. The body of knowledge is changing and I wanted to take a moment to break down what exactly the changes are and what are those new topics and concepts that you need to know to be successful on exam day. Alright, let's head over to the computer and get started. All right, let's take a look at today's agenda. So the first thing I want to cover is specifically when these changes to the Greenbelt Body of Knowledge will take effect. This has a huge impact for, for some people depending on when your exam is scheduled. So I want to start by specifically diving into when the changes take effect. And then I want to start high level. I want to start big picture. What are the high level big picture changes that ASQ made to the Greenbelt Body of Knowledge and how that affects the exam that you will be taking in the future? So I want to talk about that. I think that's a really interesting change that ASQ made to the Body of Knowledge. And then, uh, and this is probably the bulk of, of today's lecture, I want to show you the, the brand new Body of Knowledge and break down specifically the changes that are being made to the Body of Knowledge. If you're taking the exam after August, spoiler alert, that's when it goes into effect. If you're taking the exam after August, there are new topics that you need to know to be successful on exam day. So I want to show you exactly what those are. And then at the end, I'm going to summarize the 14 new tools, topics, and concepts that are going to be included in the August 2022 version of the Six Sigma Greenbelt Body of Knowledge. So I'm super excited to show you that. And then for those of you who are preparing, I want to help you. I want to give you a free resource to help you learn and, and incorporate these 14 tools, topics, and concepts into your study plan so that if you're taking the exam after August, you're totally prepared for these new topics and you're going to be successful on exam day. So stick around to the end and I'll share that awesome resource with you. Now, I want to talk about when the, the changes take effect. So here it is. The Greenbelt Body of Knowledge, if, if you aren't familiar, the exam happens on even number months, April, June, August, and October. And if you went to register for an exam recently, you notice this little asterisk on the application. Essentially, if you want to take the exam anytime after August 1st, there's going to be a new body of knowledge that is tested in that exam window. So every test after August 1st, will cover the new body of knowledge, not the old one. And so that's really important. Depending on when your exam is, if it's after August, you really have to incorporate these new concepts into your study plan to be successful on exam day. So that's when it takes effect, August 1st. Remember, the application deadline is July 5th. And so if you want to take the exam before August 1st, the last day to apply is May 5th. That's the last day to to apply to take an exam in the previous window, so the June 1st window, you have to apply by May 5th. And then after May 5th, the only exam available to you is this new body knowledge, and that's obviously gonna affect you, so, so stick around. Okay, so before we jump into the specific changes that ASQ made that I think are, are fantastic changes, by the way, I wanna start big picture. If you look at the Six Sigma Green Belt Body of Knowledge, there are six sections, overview, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And later on in this video, I'm gonna, we're gonna go through each one of these sections in the body of knowledge, and I'm gonna show you chapter by chapter what new topics are being added to which topics. But for now, what I, I first wanna show you is just how the exam is broken down. If you look at the number of questions on the exam, in total, there are 100 questions. And these are the number of questions you're gonna get from each pillar in the body of knowledge. So 13, 23, 23, 15, 15, and 11. And this is the current version of the Body of Knowledge, the 2014 revision that is active all the way up until August 1st. After August 1st, the number of questions on the exam is going to change. So I wanted to show you what those numbers are and obviously how they're different from the 2014 version. So for example, the overview section currently has 13 questions in the future after August 1st, there will be 11 questions on the exam from the overview section. So you'll notice the overview, define, and measure sections are all losing questions on the exam. The analyze, improve, and control uh, pillars are all gaining questions on the exam. I think this is a really good change because I think it creates a little bit more balance. If you look here in the 2014 version, the define and measure chapters or pillars make up almost half the exam. And so I think by taking away questions from some of these pillars and spreading them out, I think it creates a more balanced and holistic approach to the entire body of knowledge. So I really applaud ASQ for making these changes because I think they're really positive. Net, there's still 100 questions on the exam. So there's still only going to be 100 questions. Again, they're more spread out. So analyze picks up three, improve picks up one. That's what I mean by plus one. Control picks up the most. That's plus four. 
And of course, we'll get into all that to talk about new topics in the control phase of the body of knowledge. Now, let's dive in because I want to go pillar by pillar, talk to you about each chapter in each pillar, and show you how the body of knowledge is specifically changing for each chapter in the body of knowledge. So let's start with the overview pillar. Remember, the overview pillar is losing two particular questions, and this is made up of three chapters. The first chapter is called Six Sigma and Organizational Goals. Now, if you look at the body of knowledge, here it is. I've taken a screenshot of it, and I'll, I'll put links below in the description to both the, the current version and the future August 2022 version. But if you look at the body of knowledge and you read the words specifically, the only changes is this what I've highlighted here, including SMART goals. So if you're preparing for the Six Sigma Green Belt exam, the only addition to this particular chapter is the concept of SMART goals. That's the only change. So if you're using, for example, the second edition of the Green Belt Handbook, you're pretty solid there, except for needing to learn about SMART goals. If you move on to chapter two, which is called Lean Principles in the Organization, you can see that here. Nothing is being removed. By the way, I should have said that about chapter one. Nothing or no topics have been removed from the body of knowledge, but we did add a few concepts, and I've highlighted those in green. The things that were added to the body of knowledge are tack time, just in time, Gemba and spaghetti diagram. Now, you'll notice here that I've, I've color-coded these, so there's blue ones, tack time, just in time, and Gemba. If you're using the second edition of the, the Greenbelt Handbook, these topics are already included in the handbook. So if that's the resource you're using, don't necessarily stress out about these topics in blue because they're already in your study resource. The topic in red that I think is a true addition to the body of knowledge, a new concept or a new topic that you need to learn that's, that's not in that resource is the spaghetti diagram. And so that's one of those 14 new tools and concepts that you need to learn to be successful on exam day is the spaghetti diagram. And then as staying in this pillar, chapter three is called Design for Six Sigma. What they've added is, is again, this section, and here's the screenshot, this section in green, understand how verification and validation are used to compare results against stated goals. Design VNV or design verification and validation is a very common practice that organizations use when designing new products. So I think this is a really solid addition to the body of knowledge. Green belts need to understand how products are designed and verified and validated in the design process. So I think this is a really solid addition. Again, it's shown in red because this concept is not covered in the second edition of the Six Sigma Green Belt Handbook. So if that's the resource you're using, again, it's not going to be included in that particular resource. Okay, let's move on. So that was the overview pillar. I want to talk about the defined pillar now. And again, we're losing three questions here, but I want to go chapter by chapter and talk about what specifically is changing. So chapter four, or the, or the first chapter here in the defined pillar is called project identification. Nothing is changing about the body of knowledge for project identification. Now in chapter five, which is considered voice of the customer or called voice of the customer, again, we're not removing anything but we are adding two new topics, the Kano model and critical to X, where X can be quality or cost or safety, whatever, and the critical to quality tree. All of these new concepts will be included in the future exam after August 1st, as well as now being included in the body of knowledge. And again, I've shown them in red because the second edition of the Greenbelt Handbook does not include these topics. These are truly new concepts or new topics that you'll have to prepare for if you wanna sit for the exam. And then chapter six. So chapter six gets back to project management. So project management basics. And there's actually three sub chapters here that are all changing. There's a brand new section called project methodology that teaches two things, the agile methodology, as well as top down project management. So that's a brand new addition to the body of knowledge. And then when we get down here into project planning tools, there's again, two new topics, the work breakdown structure and toll gate reviews. Those are two new additions to the body of knowledge. And then the third thing here in project risk management is they updated the title. So it says project risk analysis and management. I think that's just a clerical update. If you're analyzing risks in a project, you should also be managing those risks. So I think adding the words and management is simply just a clarification to make this more appropriate. They also add the words and risk management in, in terms of project risk management. Again, I think that's really important. If you're analyzing risks and identifying them, you should manage those project risks throughout the project life cycle. Now there is one new topic here that they include business continuity planning so that is a new concept or a new topic uh, that is is fresh to the body of knowledge and not included in the second edition of the six sigma green belt handbook 
Now, as we move on here, chapter seven, this is management and planning tools. We are actually adding an eighth tool. So originally these were your fairly traditional seven management and planning tools. We added an eighth one. This is called SWOT analysis. That stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So again, that is a, a brand new topic to the body of knowledge that is not included in the second edition of the handbook. So that's one of the new 14 tools that you'll need to know to be successful on exam day. Chapter eight, business results for projects, nothing changing, nothing removed, nothing added. So that's pretty solid. Chapter nine here, this is called team dynamics and performance. The change they made to the body of knowledge is here in section three, team tools and decision-making concepts. I think this is just a clerical edition. If you look at the decision-making tools, multi-voting, nominal group technique, force field analysis, those are already in the body of knowledge. I think they just clarified this to say and decision-making concepts because that's what those tools are. They're tools to help you make decisions. So while this is a change to the body of knowledge, I think it's mostly clerical and I don't think the actual content on the exam will change much, although that's just my opinion. Okay, on to the measure pillar, right? We're following Demaic Define. Now we're measuring, and this includes chapter 10, process analysis, nothing changing. Chapter 11, probability and statistics. This is the one chapter that actually had what I would call a reduction in the required level of understanding. So if you look at the body of knowledge, every chapter, probability and statistics, comes with what's called a cognition level. You see here, I've highlighted it as, as understand. This is from Bloom's Taxonomy. It describes how well you have to understand a concept to be successful on exam day. And this was one topic that actually got a downgrade. So in the 2014 version of the body of knowledge, the cognition level was apply, and this got downgraded to understand. And so this is kind of a win, right? I, I do think probability was maybe overemphasized, and I, I think downgrading the, the cognition level was a, was a solid choice, and that makes room for other questions from other concepts on the exam. So I do think, I think this was a good change to downgrade how well you have to know probability. And then chapter 12, statistical distributions. Nothing's changing about that. The normal distribution, the Poisson distribution, the binomial distribution, all that stuff stays the same. For chapter 13, this is collecting and summarizing data. They did add a fairly substantial a new section to the body of knowledge. So this is all about preparing data collection plans that include gathering the data and performing quality checks. What are those best practices that you need to be aware of when collecting data to avoid errors, avoid outliers and null values, and, and do some basic analysis during the, during the collection phase? I think this is a good addition because data collection is such a fundamental aspect of being a green belt. So I thought this was a really good addition. Nothing changing about chapter 14, which is all about gauge r, &R and nothing changing about process capability. The bodies of knowledge, when I say nothing changing, I mean the bodies of knowledge are completely identical from the 2014 version to the 2022 version. That also means that if you're using, let's say, the second edition of the Greenbelt Handbook, that content is, is generally going to be applicable to this new version of the exam. Okay, on to the Analyze Pillar. So chapter 16 here in the Analyze Pillar is called Exploratory Data Analysis. This is all about linear regression and correlation and multivariate analysis. Nothing is changing about chapter 16. Same with chapter 17. This is all about hypothesis testing. And again, the bodies of knowledge are staying completely identical from 2014 to 2022. So that that's a, a pretty solid change. Here's a big one though. In chapter 18, we're actually adding a brand new chapter. This is called additional analysis methods. Now there's two things happening here. The second piece, this, this piece called root cause analysis here, number two, is actually moving from the improved pillar. So this is actually isn't new information. Five whys, relational matrices, cause and effect diagrams, other problem solving tools, that was already included in the body of knowledge. The one new tool that they added to the description here is fault tree analysis, and that's not in the second edition of the Greenbelt Handbook. So that is a new tool here, but this particular chapter or this section is not new. Gap analysis is new, and I, and I love this idea of gap analysis. I'm glad they added this to the body of knowledge. A lot of continuous improvement professionals think about your current state and your future state. Where do we want to be in the future, and where are we today, and doing that gap analysis, and then using the DMAIC process to essentially close that gap is a huge concept in the world of continuous improvement. So I love that they've added gap analysis to the, to the analyzed pillar of the body of knowledge. I think that's a great perspective that every green belt needs to have. Now, moving on to the improved pillar, again, we're adding one question here to the body of knowledge, so this, this section is expanding. Nothing's changing about chapter 19, design of experiments, so you're good there. 
we are adding a brand new chapter. This is called implementation planning. And I love that ASQ is adding this. When you're making a big change and you're implementing something new, there's a lot that can go wrong and there's a lot of best practices that you can use to make that implementation smooth. Proof of concepts, pilot testing, prototype testing. There's all sorts of things and, and there's a lot of tools you can use to be successful implementing a new change. So I like that they're adding this to the body of knowledge as a brand new chapter. Now, chapter 21 is lean tools. And if you look at the body of knowledge itself, the only thing they added was a reference to SMED, single minute exchange of dies. I'm showing this in blue because if you have the second edition of the handbook, SMED is already included in the handbook in multiple chapters. So I don't see this as a new edition or a new concept on the exam. People are already seeing questions about SMED on today's exam. This is just a clerical change, I think, to highlight the importance of SMED as a tool that you can use to, to reduce cycle time and, and reduce setup. So that's chapter 21. And now on to the very last pillar in the body of knowledge. This is the control pillar. We're adding four questions here. Now, good news, chapter 22 on statistical process control is not changing. So you'll still need to know about common and special cause variation, variable data control charts, attribute data control charts, and how to analyze those. I think it's all really important. This is a big addition. So here we go. There's a brand new chapter in this particular pillar and it's called sustain improvements. Now, not all of this is new. So for example, uh, section number one here on control plans is in the existing body of knowledge. So that's not new, but a lot of this stuff is new. Document control, training plans, auditing. These are all tools that you can use in the control phase to make sure that your training is effective in the long run and controlled and sustainable, right? So I think this is a really nice improvement. Plan to check act is not new, by the way, that is already included in the second edition of the Greenbelt handbook as well as the previous body of knowledge. So plan to check act, I should not have highlighted that, but doc control, training plans, and audits are all new concepts for this next version of the body of knowledge. And again, I think this is a really good addition from ASQ. The last chapter, here we go, lean tools for process control. So two additions were made to the body of knowledge here in this particular chapter. The first is this little phrase here called including the use of predictive maintenance. I think this is just a clerical change. You know, if you have the second edition of the body of knowledge, it already covers the use of predictive maintenance and, and the importance of predictive maintenance. So I think this is just a, a clerical change to highlight the importance of predictive maintenance. If you come down here to Visual Factory though, we do add two new concepts that are not already included in the body of knowledge, Andon and Jidoka. These are two fantastic tools to help you control your process. You know, I, I talked about the 14 new tools and concepts. These are two of them because they're not in the existing body of knowledge and they're not in the existing Greenbelt handbook. So these are two new tools that you'll have to learn to be successful on exam day. Now, I, I know we covered a lot here, so I wanted to just to kind of wrap up with a summary side. I wanted to take all of the new concepts, truly new concepts that I think ASQ is adding to the body of knowledge and provide you with a, a list here. And I think there's 14 new topics that come August will show up on the, the Greenbelt exam. And so I wanted to just kind of show those to you quickly. Smart goals, spaghetti diagrams, design VNV, the Kano model, business continuity planning, SWOT analysis, gap analysis, implementation planning, sustained improvements, and on Jadoka. The reason I'm showing some of them in blue, by the way, is because I want to give you a free resource. I want to help you prepare for the future, you know, the post-August Greenbelt exam. And that is a free course. So this is a free course. I call it the 14 new tools for the Greenbelt exam. And what I do is I, I took those, what I would call the, the 10 or the nine most important new topics from the body of knowledge. And I've got video lectures and practice exams and downloadable PDFs that you can get completely for free to help you prepare for the Greenbelt exam. The other resource I would love to share with you is go to greenbeltacademy.com, by the way. You can sign up for this free course. I'll put a link below in the description. Go to greenbeltacademy.com slash new tools. That'll, that'll get you to that free course. You can sign up completely for free. By the way, if you just want to go to greenbeltacademy.com, I've got other practice exams. I've got study guides. I've got free training content there because there's a ton of, of, again, free stuff to help you prepare for the Greenbelt exam. That's it for me. I'm Andy Robertson. I, I hope you found this really enjoyable, really helpful. Feel free to, to hit reply or leave a comment below with any questions and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day. Bye.